Discord. So yun, anyway, yung po yung ibig sabihin na exegetical study, ito po ay talagang uh, we're gonna dig deep dito sa uh, book na ito. And this is something, this is a book na hindi masyado talaga na, pag, uh, na, na talagang nahihimay. Uh, usually, nami-misunderstood itong, uh, itong, itong book na ito. Na usually, kung ikaw ay single at naghahanap ka ng okay... Um, Uh, man of uh, your dreams or if you uh, if you if you kung gusto mo po syempre ng ng ikasal no minsan ito yung ito yung ano ito kagad yung gustong basahin kasi okay gayahin mo si Ruth uh, mag-glean ka doon sa sa uh, doon sa may uh, farm doon sa field and then makikita mo ang iyong uh, Boaz but i think um uh, i, 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 Pwede kasing ma-misunderstand po natin ang book na ito kung ganun po ang ang ating ganun lamang ang ating uh, understanding sa, sa sa book of Ruth. In fact, napakalaki po ng 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 contribution ng book of Ruth especially as we as we look at the entire Bible story. And yun po yung very important no? whenever we read a uh, a book or even a chapter in the Bible hindi po natin ilalayo yung kabuuan ng Bible story. Ano yung place nitong book na to sa kabuuang storya ng Biblia? Okay? Marahil, if, maybe we can focus more on that as we, uh, kapag natapos natin yung book of Ruth. Pero uh, para mas malinaw sa atin yung placing nitong book na to doon sa entire Bible story. And so, as we... Uh, Uh, study itong chapter 1 ay divide natin into three parts ito uh, to this afternoon unang una yung unbelief trying to run from our problems we can see that in chapter 1 verses 1 to 5 and dinivide ko pa yon into two na makikita natin sa first part yung migration nila to Moab and then there's there's some tragedy na nangyari doon sa family And also, secondly, there is merong deception, uh, trying to hide our mistakes. That's um, from verses 6 to 17, and I divided it into three pa. Naomi asks her daughters to return home, and then we see Orpah's true heart, and then Ruth's radical commitment. Okay? Later on, mas makikilala niyo po yung mga characters na to. Thirdly, meron tayong makikitang bitterness bitterness blaming god for our trials we 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 can we will see that in verses 18 to 22 and divide ko po siya kita natin merong bitterness and then yung pagbalik no uh, from their migration to moab babalik sila doon sa kanilang totoong land so let's look at the first part unbelief no unbelief trying to run from our problems uh, in order for us to to understand this of course kailangan nating basahin ang scripture basahin muna natin yung chapter 1 verses 1 to 5 basahin ko siya uh, yung yung uh, english standard version niya in the days when the judges ruled there was uh, ruled there was a famine in the land and a man of bethlehem in juda went to sojourn in the country of moab He and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem and Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Ahimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpa, and the name of the other Ruth. They lived there about ten years, and both Malon and Chilion died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. So, makita natin on uh, doon palang sa beginning, uh, sa verse one. It, it, The author shows us kung kailan to nangyari. An- anong mga anong situation during that time when this started? It started in the days when the judges ruled. Kung makikita natin sa ating uh, scriptures, sa ating Bible, the the book before Ruth is Judges. Okay? Now, kung 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 i-review po natin ang book ng Judges, um, basically, 
it's a cycle no makikita natin po doon yung Israel and Israel is the uh, nation uh, ito yung people of God sila yung tinawag ng Diyos out of Egypt tapos sila po ay binigyan ng land, yung the land of milk and honey, the land of Canaan, yun yung blessing sa kanila ng Panginoon. So balit, uh, I mean, despite of uh, the, all the blessings that God has given them, yung land na binigay sa kanila, yung, 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 yung provisions, eh, paulit-ulit ang rebellion, paulit-ulit ang idolatry, ang immorality ng Israel. No? Tapos paulit-ulit din yung, yung, yung grumbling nila. No, it, it, if we if we glean or if we scan the the entire Old Testament, it's a story of the people of God really grumbling despite of the blessings of God. Paulit ulit. Pagdating sa Judges, na wala pa po yung panahon ng mga kings. Hindi pa wala pa yung sila Saul, David, uh, Solomon, or itinatawag nating monarchy. Wala pa po yun. So ang, ang ginawa ng Diyos, nag, he, he raised up judges. Sila po yung talaga naging leader ng Israel. So yun, in the days when the judges ruled. Now, again, like I, like I mentioned a while ago, cycle yung book of Judges. Cycle in a way na God raised a judge to, to rule the land of Israel. But then Israel uh, rebels immorality, idolatry, uh, grumbling, and then afterwards, uh, God will judge them, and then magre-repent sila. And then afterwards, ganun naman, paulit-ulit yung, yung cycle ng Book of Judges. Isa sa mga judgment ng Panginoon during that time, and even um, uh, many, many years pa, no, ginagamit itong judgment ng Panginoon sa Israel, yung famine. No? So during that time, in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. This is the land of Canaan. Ito yung, ito yung uh, uh, blessing ng Panginoon sa Israelites. Dito sila nakatira. And then a man of Bethlehem in Judah, nandun yon yung Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. Okay? Now, um, kung mapapansin nyo, dito pa lang, yung, 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 yung lugar na Moab is not part of the land of blessing. In fact, yung Moab is a, 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 a pati yung mga nakatira sa Moab are considered foreigners. Hindi sila uh, part ng people of God. So imagine, yung man, and we will name him, yun yung sinabi dun sa scripture, sabi the name of the man was Elimelech and the, and the name of his wife, Naomi. So yung mag-asawa dahil may famine, may taggutom doon sa, uh, sa Canaan, specifically sila ay from uh, Judah, umalis sila doon at pumunta sila sa isang pagan country. Okay, so probably may green, greener pastures doon. Uh, and, and again, yung foreign countries noon, walang, uh, walang uh, hindi, nag, hindi gumawa ng relasyon ang Panginoon doon sa mga pagan nations na yun. Okay? Wala silang tinatawag na covenant. When we say covenant, it is like parang ano, parang mag-asawa. Nag, you, you agree. Nag-agree po kayo sa isa't isa na okay, uh, 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 pakakasalan kita, uh, wala, uh, sa'yo lang ako. Uh, di ba usually may mga vow ng ganun, uh, till death do us part. Basically, it's an, it's an agreement between two parties. Ganun po yung ginawa ng Panginoon sa Israelites. Nagbigay siya ng covenant sa Israel, ako lang ang Diyos nyo, wala nang iba. At dahil ako ang Diyos nyo, susundin nyo ako, bibigay ko sa inyo itong land na to. Now, nakamit na ng Israel yung land na yon. Unfortunately, they're, they're, very, uh, they're very idolatrous talaga. Okay? So parang, kumbaga parang sumasamba pa rin sila sa iba't ibang Diyos. Okay? So hindi sila tapat sa kanilang covenant. Now, ang, ang covenant ng Panginoon, mag kayo sa land na to. Now, dun pa lang, sa verse 1 ng, ng Ruth, chapter 1, meron na tayong nakikitang disobedience dito from the people of God. Meron na tayong nakikitang disobedience from the people of God. In the time, in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. Just because there was a famine in the land, they went to sojourn in the country, in, in a pagan 
country, which is Moab. Okay, so both Elimelech and Naomi went there. Why? Kasi may, kasi mukhang mas prosperous ang ang Moab, right? Hindi ka naman aalis sa isang lugar na, na wala ng pagkain, hindi ka pupunta sa isang lugar na probably alam mo na nandoon yung kailangan mo na wala na dito sa lugar na to. Okay? Sabi nga ni Ian Jugood sa kanyang commentary, let me read, the ultimate irony had occurred. Bethlehem, yung pangalang Bethlehem, yung lugar kung saan sila galing, sa, it's a place in Judah, Bethlehem, whose very name means house of bread, was a place of no food. Dahil sa judgment ng Panginoon. In that situation, Elimelech had a choice to make, a road to choose. He could stay in Bethlehem, the empty bread, uh, bread basket of Judah, mourning the sin that surrounded him and trusting God to provide for him. Alternatively, he could leave the promised land. Again, promised land yung inalisan niya. He could, nilang mag-asawa. He could leave the promised land behind in search of greener fields. In this case, the fields of Moab where food was more abundant. So makikita na natin doon. No? Um, hindi siya explicit sa ating verse 1 na it, it, is a dis, it is disobedience to God na umalis doon. No? Pero clear dahil meron kasi silang covenant doon. Titingnan natin yung verses na yun na nagsasabi na, na hindi talaga pwede. Ito kasi, so ito yung mga choices ni Elimelech and Naomi, yung bad choices nila. Una-una, they escape to Moab despite of the covenant of the Lord which requires them to be faithful in the land. It says here in Leviticus chapter 26 verses 3 to 4, If you walk in my statutes and observe my commandments and do them, then I will give you your rains in their season. And the land shall yield its increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Nasan dito yung sinasabi natin? Sabi dito, if you walk in my statutes, kung susundin nyo ang aking batas, ten commandments, kung kayo ay uh, talagang faithfully will sacrifice those animals whenever you sin, If you observe my commandments, kung gagawin nyo siya, bibigyan ko kayo ng provision, bibigyan ko kayo ng ulan. And the land shall yield its increase. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. God is talking about the land of the prom- the promised land here. Hindi niya sinasabi na, na gagawin niyang prosperous yung other lands. Gagawin niyang prosperous yung, yung land kung nasang kayo. Doon lamang. Huwag kayong aalis dyan. Okay? Merong covenant ang Panginoon sa inyo. Second bad uh, choice na ginawa ni Elimelech and Naomi is this. Uh, especially, uh, actually, yung, yung pamilya nila, no? yung dalawang anak nila, their two sons, married Moabite women. Yun yung problema. Kaya ayaw ng Panginoon na umalis sila at pumunta sila sa pagan country. Ano mangyayari? Eto mangyayari. Yung kanilang mga anak would probably marry pagan women. These are pagan women. When we say pagan, wala si, they are unknown, unknown sa kanila ang mga promises ng Panginoon. Unknown sa kanila ang revelation ng Panginoon compared to how God revealed Himself to Israel through pillar and fire, through the, in the tabernacle. Wala silang ganong privileges. No? Tapos aalis ka doon sa privilege na yon and then mag-aasawa ka ng pagan women na walang Diyos. Yun yung problema. Yun din yung reason ng Panginoon why intermarriage is forbidden in the Mosaic Law. Hindi kayo pwedeng ang pinili ng Panginoon ay ang nation ng Israel. Ito yung mga anak ni Abraham, descendants ni Abraham. Hindi, hindi pumili ng mga Perizzites, Jebusites, hindi niya pinili yon. Moabite, hindi niya pinili yon. Pinili niya ay ang nation of Israel. And for you to even intermarry with these pagan women, it, it's very sinful yon. especially. It's, it's something that was forbidden in their law. Sabi nga sa Deuteronomy, sorry, that's Deuteronomy chapter 7. Hindi po yan chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 to 
when the Lord your God brings you into to the land. Okay? Kung ang Diyos ay dadaling kayo sa, sa, sa promised land na, na, that you are entering to take possession of it and clears away many nations before you, imagine. Nung mga panahon ni Moses, when they were uh, having that 40-year uh, journey no, uh, sa wilderness, um, may mga inhabitants po ng, ng Canaan, the land of the promised land. And binigyan sila ng kalakasan ng Panginoon to drive these other nations away doon sa land na yon because God will give them that land, yung promised land na yon. So seven nations, more numerous and mightier than you, and when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you defeat them, then you must devote them to complete destruction. You shall make no covenant with them and show no mercy to them. You shall not intermarry with them, giving your daughters to their sons or taking their daughters for your sons. Malinaw na malinaw sa law ng Panginoon. Okay? Sabi ni Ian, do good again. The book of Ruth addresses us as people who are just like Elimelech and Naomi. Like them, we often find that grass seems greener in the fields on the Moabite side of the fence. The temptation to abandon the bread of heaven for this world's provision is very strong, especially during times when the bread of heaven seems scarce. The option of choosing the land of compromise, in this case Moab, instead of faithfully persevering by faith in the land of promise, is a constant theme in the Old Testament. The food that the unpromised land offers seems very real, very tangible, and easily available in contrast to the promises of God which constantly test our faith and our trust. If if Moses was alive during this time, he would love to stay in, in the land. Unfortunately, hindi niya naabutan yung, yung panahon ni Joshua na sila po ay nasakop nila yung land of Canaan. But if Moses was, nakita natin yung zealousness ni Moses when he was alive. Pero nakita natin yung, yung, yung pagbagsak ng nation of Israel pagdating dito many years after the time of Moses. Na time na, ng, time na ni Ruth, time, time na nila Naomi and Elimelech, ng mismong people in the time of Moses, they would want to be, or especially Moses and Aaron, they would want to, uh, to witness that. Gusto nilang makapasok sa, sa promised land. And then nakita natin yung pagbagsak ng nation, yung mga tao ngayon gusto nang umalis. Bakit? Because of God's judgment. And bakit may judgment ang Panginoon? Because of their sin. So, kikita natin dito na resulta ng kasalanan yung, yung paghihirap nila. No? This, na instead of prosperous no? na, na, na ang buhay nila doon ay uh, basically um, uh, pinop, nag, nagpo-provide ang Panginoon sa kanila. No? Uh, nagpo-provide ng mana, nagpo-provide ng ng quail, may meat. So so sobra yung provisions ng Panginoon sa kanila. Pero despite of everything, they still sin. And because of their sins, merong mga nangyayaring hus- uh, may may mga may judgment ang Panginoon sa kanila. Ngayon, because of the judgment, alis kami. Okay? Ganun po yung nangyari nung time nila. Now, nung pumunta sa Elimelech and si si Naomi sa Moab, merong tragedy na nangyari sa pamilya nila. Ano yon? In verses uh, 3 to 5, we read, But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died. And she was left with her two sons. These, yung dalawang anak niya, these took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpa, and the name of the other, Ruth. They lived there about 10 years. And both Malon and Chilion died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. So basically, hindi nakadugo ni Naomi yung kasama niya ngayon. Unang-una, her husband died, uh, Elimelech died first, and then Ruth was, uh, uh, sorry, uh, dun sa, tawag dito, doon po sa lecture natin should be Naomi. Naomi was left with her two sons. 
Okay? Si Malon and Chilion, they took uh, Moabite wives, si Orpa and Ruth, and then namatay din yung dalawang anak. Now, Naomi was left with Orpa and Ruth. Na, again, hindi naman niya kadugo talaga. Now, there would be no one else to, to support a foreign widow, si Naomi, in her declining years. Okay, usually talaga, wala magsusupport sa kanya dito, especially wala na rin siyang husband. She's, she's now a stranger in a foreign land. In a strange land, an aging single woman of no significance in a family-oriented culture with no one to care for or to care about her. Okay? Yun yung nangyari doon sa end ng verse 5. Now, what can we see? Anong matututunan natin dito sa first section na to? Okay? That, that's what we're gonna do to, uh, this afternoon. We're gonna look at some uh, lessons na ma- matututunan natin uh, per section. We have three sections. Una, Elimelech left the place of famine to seek a false blessing in Moab. Um, makita natin yung immediate repercussions ng decision ni Elimelech and Naomi. Uh, probably thought that there's a blessing there. I mean, malinaw sa text. No? The reason why they left Bethlehem was because of famine. What's the indication? Indication is basically they're looking for a greener pasture. Naghahanap sila ng lugar kung saan walang famine. And it turned out that it was a false blessing. Um, why? Because it was disobedience. Sinabi na ng Panginoon, huwag ay pupunta dyan. But did you know, na if, if we're going to look at the New Testament, we, we also see the same thing, but not in a negative way, but in a positive way. See, si Christ, si Jesus Christ, He left the glories of heaven to bring us a true blessing on earth. Okay? Comparing to Elimelech who, who left because he thought na uh, wala ron yung blessing ng Panginoon. No? Where, where in fact sinabi ng Panginoon na nandito ang blessing, sundin nyo lang ako. Okay? Nandito ang mga material blessings. Okay? Uh, pero hindi niya sinunod. Pero si Kristo, sinunod niya ang kanyang Diyos Ama. Pero it, would, it required him to, left, to, to leave the glories of heaven to bring us a true blessing on earth. Anong klaseng true blessing yung dinala naman ni Cristo para sa atin? Uh, sabi sa Philippians chapter 2, siya po ay katawang tao. Uh, hindi niya, hindi natanggal sa kanya ang kanyang pagiging Diyos. Pero siya po ay, kumbaga, nagkaroon siya ng, 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 ng uh, katawang tao. At basically, siya po ay nabuhay na, 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 ng walang kasalanan. But also, He died on the cross para sa ating kasalanan. So that tayo po ang makatanggap ng totoong blessing. No? Lahat ng blessing sa Old Testament, uh, especially yung blessing ng land, yung po yung, yung, po yung ano eh, that's the, the blessing that, uh, uh, that Israel would get. No? Yung pag-retain nila, pag-remain nila sa, sa land of Canaan, yun yung blessing na talagang mapapasa kanila kung nanatili lang silang uh, masunurin sa commandment ng Panginoon. Now, that land blessing also points to a future blessing that we have. To a future land blessing that we have uh, and that is yung bagong mundo, new heaven and new earth. No, yun yung that that is what it's what it points to. No? Now, sa panahon natin, hindi hindi na contingent upon our obedience para makamit natin yon. Hindi kagaya ng mga Israelites na kailangan mag-obey sila ng commandment sa Panginoon so that they will get the blessing of the land or, or they will get the land blessing. They will remain in that land which we know na hindi sila naging obedient so tinanggal ng Panginoon ang land sa kanila. Pero ngayon, sa, sa atin, sa New Testament, we don't need to uh, to earn God's... Uh, uh, kung baga hindi natin kailangan yung, yung works natin, hindi contingent sa ating works para makuha natin yung blessing. Which, again, yung totoong blessing which is the, the future, no? yung new heavens and new earth, yun yung talagang land na hinihintayin natin lahat, kasama natin si Kristo. Okay, the new earth, basically. Unlike the Israelites, hindi po nakasalalay sa atin. 
nakasalalay kay Christ. Siya ang sumunod ng buong commands ng Panginoon. Siya perfectly, walang kasalanan, sinunod niya. Unlike the Israelites who were really rebellious, Jesus Christ was perfect. He lived a perfect life, obeying the, full, the, the whole counsel of God, the full commandments of God, in order to, 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 to obtain that blessing, that future blessing, which we will all enjoy with Him. Yun yung, differences, yun yung difference dito. No? And again, eh, hindi natin makakamit yun kung hindi tayo maniniwala na si Kristo ay ginawa talaga yun. That He was able to live a perfect life in obedience to God the Father. That He was able to die in behalf of us. That He was able to die on the cross uh, at, at Siya po ang nakareceive ng mismong judgment at hindi tayo. The reason why we are able to, 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 to receive such true blessing especially in the future. Ngayon, meron na tayong blessing. We are having, we hindi na po tayo condemned. Eh. Pero meron pa pong blessing in the future. Kung ikukumpara natin siya sa Old Testament, meron din tayong land blessing and that is again, yung heaven, new heavens and new earth with Christ. Kung hindi po tayo maniniwala na the reason why we, we can and we will enjoy that blessing in the future because Christ died on the cross for us because He kinuha niya yung punishment na dapat sa atin. Kung hindi po tayo maniniwala doon, then hindi po natin yun makukuha. Hindi po para sa atin yun. Kaya siguro kung kayong nakikinig ngayon, uh, very important sa study natin na ito, na maalala natin yung ginawa ni Kristo ng yun. Uh, and in order for us to, to be able to, to be recipients of such blessings, uh, una-una, yung, yung, yung future na yun, na tayo ay ligtas, uh, hindi tayo condemned, Uh, with Christ, enjoying our eternity with Him, that only happens if we're able to repent of our sins and trust in Christ. So if uh, kung kayo ay nabisita ngayon dito sa study natin, if that is something na hindi nyo pa talaga tr- truly nagagawa, uh, please do so. Repent of your sins and believe, trust in the person and work of Jesus Christ. If we number one, secondly, Elimelech and Naomi sent themselves into exile from the land of promise. In exile nila yung sarili nila basically. Trying to build their own kingdom. Okay? They were trying to build their own kingdom kasi nag-asawa pa yung mga anak nila rather than waiting for God to do it. Jesus though went into exile from his father's presence so that he might rescue us from our own kin- kingdom building. Yung gusto natin na gawin natin na sige mag-build tayo ng kingdom na technically for us kasamaan yon, and grant us a true and living future in his kingdom. So basically this is something na uh, you, you, you even sa five, first five verses nakikita natin, we can compare what happens in the New Testament, uh, specifically doon sa work ni Christ. And thirdly, the pain of God's chastening work. We're not saying that Naomi will end up a, uh, an unbeliever. Makikita natin sa, as, as, as the story progresses. No? Uh, kasi kung totoong believer ang isang tao, merong chastening ang pangiro, Panginoon. No? The pain of God's chastening work is designed to what? to show us the emptiness of the paths we have chosen for ourselves so that we may return to His ways. And probably, uh, nakaka-relate kayo dito. No? Uh, if you, if you uh, kung ilang years na rin po kayong uh, Kristiyano, marahil uh, because of your disobedience, whatever that is, and that whatever... Uh, decide mo for yourself and you know that that is sin. It, is, it was against uh, God's purposes at ginawa mo pa rin. And of course, God will chasten you. Uh, sometimes God will use His people to discipline you. And, uh, alam natin, God uses the church to discipline a Christian. And ba- bakit? Para saan yung discipline na yon? Ang ultimate result nun, ang, ult- ang goal ng discipline is for us to return to His ways. Ganun ang, ganun ang, uh, ang, ang purpose ng, ng, ng chastening work ng Panginoon. Lastly, 
God's providence shines forth even in the midst of sin and obedience. Mas magiging klaro itong providence na ito. In fact, yung, yung kabuuan ng Book of Ruth, makikita talaga natin yung providence ng Panginoon. It, it, para tong yung ano eh, yung, yung, uh, yung story ni, um, ni Joseph na uh, despite of whatever uh, the, uh, his brothers did to him, almost patay na siya doon, pero ginawa pa rin maganda ng Panginoon. Kahit na yung goal nila is, uh, is mali, kasamaan yung ways nila, God turned it to something good pa rin. Makikita natin dito yung providence niya. No? Um, despite of their sin and disobedience sa kanilang pag-alis sa uh, land of the promise. Now let's look at the second section. Deception trying to hide our mistakes. We can see that in verses 6 to 17. So basahin ko muna yung verses 6 to 11. Then she arose with her daughters. Sorry. There she ar- then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? At the onset, we will see parang, wow, very concerned talaga pala si, si Naomi. No? Uh, I mean, he, he, she even uses the word of God, yung, yung personal name ni God. May the Lord, that's Yahweh. That's, a nor- that's yun yung um, personal name ng Panginoon. Eh. So parang okay, uh, godly talaga si, si Naomi dito. She probably met uh, good naman for uh, kay, kay uh, Ruth saka kay Orpa. Na, Sige, bumalik na kayo sa inyong pagan country. Ako, babalik na ako sa Jerusalem. Total, uh, namatay na yung asawa ko, namatay na din yung dalawang anak ko. Wala na, talag- wala, wala na rin ako maibibigay sa inyo na, 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 na husband. Eh, matanda na din ako. Baka hindi na rin ako magkaroon ng uh, asawa or ng, ng panibagong anak. Yun basically yung, ano rito, yung, yung, yung sinasabi rito ni Naomi. Again, if you read it, it would seem as if parang oy, very, uh, napaka uh, thoughtful naman ni Naomi. Pero tinan natin ano ba talaga nasa puso ni Naomi dito. No? Tinan natin sa... sa, sa um, Tingnan natin kung ano yung reason niya. No? Why does she want to... Kasi 10 years na siyang nagstay sa Moab um, of also with Naomi, uh, also with Ruth and Orpa, yung dalawang daughters-in-law niya. Ano ba yung main reason niya for returning? Bakit siya babalik sa Jerusalem now? I, I highlighted it. For she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. Now, you may interpret this, uy, naku, uh, ang ibig sabihin dito na that the Lord had visited His people. Kung baga parang natapos na yung time of judgment. Sabi ko nga, di ba, medyo cycle yung story ng book of Judges. Merong, uh, nag, nagre-repent kuno ang Israel, tapos bibigyan ng blessing, uh, probably, ayun, yung food, no, mawawala yung famine, but then they will grumble again, idolatry, babalik na naman, and then mag-judge naman ng Panginoon, uh, either famine or whatever judgment that was. Ganun yung nangyayari sa, sa Israel that time. Ngayon, nung narinig daw niya na okay, the Lord had visited His people. Ibig sabihin parang natapos na yung, yung, yung time ng judgment and then meron ng, ano, meron ng blessing. Wala na yung famine. Yun yung, yun yung sinasabi sa atin dito. No? She arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab. Moab. Why? Kasi narinig niya eh. Narinig niya na wala ng famine. Binigyan na ng pagkain ng Panginoon ang Israel. That, that was her main reason basically. 
Okay? She would have to swallow her pride uh, and go back to God's people, uh, Bethlehem in Judah, where she had heard them, uh, where she had heard that there was no now food again. Okay? Sabi sa verse 6. So, she set out from the place where she was, sa Moab, with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. So, on the way na. Pero, for some reason, sinabi ni Naomi dito na, bumalik kayo. Okay? Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you. Yun yung next uh, uh, passage. No? Makikita natin, unang-una, yung main reason niya why she wants to go. Why she wants to return. Kasi, uh, meron ng food. Wala ng famine. And then she gives, uh, binigyan niya ng reasons to leave yung daughters-in-law niya. No? Makikita natin dito, hinighlight ko in yellow yung, yung sinabi ni Naomi dito. Go return, go return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Now, makita mo naman dito na mayroong knowledge sa Panginoon si Naomi. And probably, nung mga tayo na to, eh, hindi naman siya unbeliever. Probably believer siya. We're saying na kahit siya ay dumaan sa ganong klaseng uh, uh, tawag dito, uh, situation, or kahit na siya ay nag-disobey ng ganon, hindi nawawala naman yung, yung yung pagiging unbeliever ng isang tao. So, dito makikita natin that she, mukhang, mukhang naniniwala rin talaga siya sa Panginoon. No? Kahit na, meron, there, there's still something wrong. Okay? So, may the Lord deal kindly with you. Sabi niya, as you have dealt with the dead and with me, the Lord grant that you may find rest each of you in the house of her husband. Again, when I say na mukhang believer naman siya, we have to read kasi the entire book of Ruth so that we can deduce that. Pero ngayon pa lang, makikita natin, base sa ating heading, no? deception, trying to hide our mistakes. Magiging klaro to, ano tong klasing deception na to. Ano yung hina, ano yung tinatago, no? Ano anong mistakes yung tinatago. Now, sabi, sabi uh, ang ang response nung uh, dalawa, they kissed, then she kissed them. Ah, sorry, si Naomi, then she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept. Nung hinalikan ni Naomi yung dalawa, they lifted up their voice, voices and wept. It's a picture of talagang uh, malukot yung dalawa to even leave their ma- mother-in-law. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. Okay? Um, actually, yung sinabi dito ni Naomi that uh, the Lord grant that you may find rest. We can find the same verse. We, we can find the same word that he used, that she used, no? In chapter 3, verse 1. My daughter, should I, seek, should I not seek rest for you that it may be well with you? Ang ibig sabihin nung parang na magkaroon ka ng lugar, ng pahinga, kapahingahan, peace. So yun ang ibig sabihin nito. Okay? Para siya sabi na Yomi na dito, pagkasama mo ko baka hindi, hindi mangyari sa'yo yun. Okay? So may the Lord grant that to you. Okay? And then, In verses 11 to 13, masahin natin, but Naomi said, kahit na after weeping, sabi nila, no, sasama kami sa'yo, sabi ng two uh, daughters-in-law. Sabi ni Naomi, turn back my daughters, why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say, I have hope even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons. Would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Now, yung mga panahon nila, yung marriage, kapag ka namatay yung lalaki at uh, hindi na naanakan ang kanyang asawang babae, yung kapatid ng lalaki, usually ang... ang ang mag, uh, the, the, the brother of the deceased uh, man should marry the, the wife of the deceased man. Okay? At aanakan niya yun. At palalakihin nila yung bata. Yun usually talaga yung 
uh, yung, yung nangyayari during that time, yung marriage nila. No? Kaya ganito yung sinasabi ni Naomi na hindi na, I am too old to have a husband at magkaroon pa ako ng anak. Hihintayin nyo ba? Even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Baka nga kayo pa yung mag-alaga ng mga baby, baby pa sila at paglaki nila, tsaka nyo pakakasalan. Parang ganun. Yan yung sinasabi ni Naomi dito. No? Na, hindi ko na kayo mabibigyan ng anak. No? Kaya go na. Sinasabi niya. Pero makikita rin natin sa, sa words ni Naomi dito. Apparently, she feels that apart from a maternal role in their lives, she has nothing to offer them. Okay? Kita na natin, medyo parang meron siya, merong nangyayari sa heart niya dito. Eh. Right? Now we go to, uh, to verses 13 to 14. Again, ulitin natin, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Sabi ni Naomi, would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter for me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then, uh, re- then you think response, no? Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. But then what happened? Si Oprah, ah, si Oprah, si Orpa, si Orpa kissed her mother-in-law Uh, but Ruth clung to her. So, makita natin yung difference of response from Orpa and Ruth. Orpa's decision proved that her heart was back home where she hoped to find a husband. Pero si Ruth, Ruth refused to listen to her mother-in-law's pleas or follow her sister-in-law's bad example. In fact, makikita natin if we jump lang no sa next chapter, makita natin yung nung dumating na sa eksena si Boaz, no. Hindi ako magbibigay ng spoiler, no. So si Boaz, uh, nandoon na siya nung Ruth chapter 2 verses 11 to 12, you can read chapter 2, no. Uh, ako actually i-advise ko na i-read niyo yung buong uh, four chapters. Pero sa chapter 2 makita natin yung yung implicate, yung result ng ng pagcling ni Ruth kay Naomi. Alam ng mga tao yung ginawa ni Ruth na, na nagstay siya sa kanyang mother-in-law. Sabi ni Boaz, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me. And how you left your father and mother. See, yung pagsama ni Ruth kay Naomi, ang ibig sabihin nun, she iniwan na rin niya ang kanyang mga magulang doon sa Moab. She left her father and mother and her native land and came to a people that she did not know before. Sabi ni Boaz, the Lord repay you for what you have done and a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Okay? So, again, makikita natin dito yung, 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 yung pagkling ni Ruth sa, sa kanyang uh, mother-in-law. Pero again, balikan natin si Orpa. Ano ba yung totoong nasa puso kasi ni Orpa? Verse 15. Sabi ni, sabi ni Naomi, see, yung kapatid mo, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. Ito yung implication ng request ni Naomi na bumalik kayo dyan. Bumalik kayo dyan. Yung attempt ni Naomi, ito yung kinocover up ni Naomi. Yung disobedience niya. Just imagine a Jew, a Jewess uh, a Jew person, no? si, si Naomi, babalik after 10 years. Um, lumayas ka doon sa, sa, sa land of the promise. For, malamang meron ka mga kamag-anak doon, mga Ephrathite. Sabi kanina, Ep, doon sila galit. Tapos babalik siya doon, tapos may kasama siyang dalawang pagan women. Hindi ba bawal nga yun? So nakikita natin yung tinatry i-cover up ni Naomi dito. <laughs> Ito, yun yung, ayaw niyang mangyari, sa totoo lang. No? And it's unfortunate that because of that attempt to cover up, it drove or pa away. Mas lalo, pumunta pa sa Diyos niya lalo. No? Sabi ni Ian Jugud, referring to uh, Orpa, she rejected the road to emptiness. But at the same time, unknowingly turned aside from the one road that could have led her to a life of lasting significance and meaning. The world's wise choice to avoid emptiness leads in the end to a different kind of oblivion. 
no? yun yung yun yung ni reject ni uh, ni ni Orpa no marahil hindi she doesn't know what uh, what lies ahead if she goes to Israel no what, ang alam lang niya probably okay yung mga okay na doon ngayon wala nang famine so nasama ako sa mother-in-law ko uh, but then she's ang heart niya nandito pa din sa Moab eto pa rin ang mas mas okay for her no yun at the end of the day yun pa rin ang pinili niya hindi lang, uh, yung, again, hindi lang yung land, hindi lang yung mga pamilya niya, si Orpa, hindi lang yun yung mga pinili niya sa pagbalik niya, even yung mga Diyos niya, doon siya bumalik. So yun yung implication ng nangyari doon sa, even sin, ito yung, et, ganun yung nangyari, nung, nung, yung, yung mga pangyayari dito eh. Yung, yung, yung cover-up ni Naomi, mas lalo tuloy, lumayo yung kanyang daughter-in-law. Pero, kikita naman natin yung response nung isa. Okay. In verses 16 to 17, ito yung immortal statement ni Ruth no? sa kanyang uh, mother-in-law. Napakaganda nitong statement na to talaga. Sabi ni Ruth, sabi, imagine nyo, ha, sabi ni Naomi, bumalik at hindi mo nakikita. See, your daughter-in-law went back to worship her gods. Nandun na siya uli. Probably magkakaroon siya ng bagong husband doon. Most probably. Ayaw mo ba nun? Pero ito si Ruth. Ang sabi niya, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Ano yung sinabi ni Ruth? And your God, my God. Tito mo yung, yung language that Ruth says here. It's a language that God himself always repeats to the Israelite people. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Paulit-ulit sinasabi ng, Israel, ng, 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 ng Panginoon sa Israelites yon. Bakit paulit-ulit? Because they always disobey. They always rebel. The same words that Ruth used. Kita natin yung conviction ni Ruth. Unang-una, Paano siya nagkaroon ng conviction na ganito if she was a pagan woman? May kita natin din yung influence ni Naomi. Right? So may kita natin na probably she's not really an unbeliever. Really. No? Hindi, baka hindi talaga. Kasi na-influence ka ng isang pagan woman. Okay? Struggling believer probably, Naomi. Right? I mean, this happens to every believer. Again, going back to the statement ni, ni, ni Ruth, your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die and there I, will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything, but death parts me from you. Right? Grabe yung, 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 yung radical commitment ni Ruth. She dearly loved her mother-in-law, but even Naomi even was against her. For she urged Ruth to return to her family and her gods in Moab. So kita natin si Ruth, she confessed her love for Naomi and her desire to stay with her mother-in-law even unto death. And then she confessed her faith in the true and living God and her decision to worship Him alone. Okay? Now, siningit ko lang, no? meron kasi mga problems of interpretation dito. Sabi kasi sa Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3, hindi ko na nilagay yung verse dyan, pero nakalagay dyan na ang mga Ammonites at ang mga Moabites are not allowed to enter the assembly of the Lord. Hindi sila pwedeng uh, pumasok no? sa, uh, sa assembly, sa, sa, sa nation of Israel. Basically, why? Naglagay po ako ng mga example doon sa lecture nyo. Um, na binigay ko. Kasi saan ba nang galing ang Moabites na nation? Galing po yan doon kay Lot tsaka yung sa incestual uh, relationship niya with uh, do- her daughters. No? Nang galing doon. Tapos ginamit din ni Balak uh, ang, ang uh, yung, yung mga time ni Balak eh, kalaban talaga ang mga Moabites. Uh, Nandiyan po yung sa lecture ninyo. No? So technically bawal. Hindi pa pwede and Ruth was a he, she was a Moabites. Doon galing siya sa nation of Moab. But it tells us in Isaiah chapter 56. If you can go there with your Bibles, hindi ko na po nalagay dito yung ano, um, 
Uh, hindi ko na nalagay yung text dito sa presentation natin. Uh, pero if you can just go to Isaiah chapter 56 verses 3 to 8 and I'm gonna read it um, from the English Standard Version. 56 verses 3 to 8. Okay, basahin ko pa. Let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people. Again, yung foreigner is someone na tagalabas. And let not the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant. I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Verse 6. And the foreigners, the guy ni Ruth, who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. Nakita natin dito yung extension ng Panginoon. Merong, meron siyang people, meron siyang mga tao, people of God, my nation of Israel, but He also extends it if ever the foreigner was faithful to the commands of the Lord. And in this case, si Ruth ay isang faithful foreigner. Okay? So we see, again, makita natin itong statement na ito. Anong makita, anong, uh, what can we learn from this section? Second section, unang-una. Ruth had experienced trials and disappointments. Of course, she was with Naomi and Orpah. But instead of blaming God, she had trusted him and was not ashamed to confess her faith. Malinaw na malinaw yun sa kanyang statement in verses 16 to 17. Secondly, Ruth was willing to forsake her father and mother. No? Nandun yun sa chapter 2, verse 11. In order to, get, in order to cleave to Naomi, and the god of her people basically hindi lang sa in, not just in order to cleave uh, doon sa kanila but also sa panginoon nila okay most importantly and thirdly god intervened and graciously saved ruth in spite of all these obstacles very clear ang testimony ni ruth doon sa kanyang confession sa kanyang profession of faith very clear kung nakanino talaga siya na siya ay niligtas ng Panginoon. Hindi natin alam kung kailan nangyari o probably within that 10 years. right? And malaki siguro ang naging influence ni, ni Naomi sa kanya. Now, despite of their disobedience, naligtas pa rin si Ruth. Nakita natin dito, no? y- yung intervention ng Panginoon despite of the sins, despite of the disobedience, Panginoon ang gumawa ng, 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 ng act. Nasa kanya talaga ang first step. Now, let's look at the last part. Okay? Yung bitterness, blaming God for our trials. Let's read. Tatapos na yung chapter 1. And when Naomi said that she was determined to go with her, and she said no more. Okay? Nung si- Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, wala na siyang sinabi. Okay? So, the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. Now, makikita natin yung bitterness ni Naomi dito sa first statement, sa, sa verse 18. Makita na natin doon eh. Walang malang thank you. No? Okay, I appreciate what... I mean, eh, kung ikaw sabihan ka ng ganon, yung, yung, yung how Ruth, and kung paano niya sinabi yung, yung, yung content mismo ng message ni Ruth, hindi ka ba, wala bang, hindi ka ba mag-choke up, hindi ka ba, alam mo yung luluha or whatever, no thank you. Uh, graced Naomi's lips. Actually, sa Hebrew, literally, yung, 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 yung translation nito, ganito siya. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped talking to her. Naomi had nothing to say to this unwanted outpouring in her state of bitterness. Kita natin dito yung walang appreciation kasi merong something sa puso ni Naomi. No? 
And then pag, uh, yung verse 19, so the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, kita siya, nung bumalik na sila, sabi ng mga babae sa town, oh, si Naomi ba yun? Na marami nagsasabi ng mga commentators sa sobrang siguro katandaan na din na Naomi and probably in her state of bitterness, it affected her physical body. Okay? Is this no? Probably yun yung kaya hindi siya masyado na mukaan. Sabi ng maraming commentators yun. So and the women said, is this Naomi? She said to them, sabi ni Naomi, do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. What does Mara mean? Bitter. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full and the Lord has brought me back empty. In fairness to Naomi, she acknowledges the sovereign hand of God. She acknowledges that God allows such things to happen to her. Now, in fairness to her, because some, uh, some people would leave uh, God out of the picture. Na talagang walang kinalaman ang Diyos, no? Walang purpose ang Panginoon for whatever is happening. Pero she, she knows. But then, she's still bitter. No? I went away full and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? However, she's blaming God. At the end of the day, this is Naomi blaming God for her trials. She knows it's God. She knows that that uh, na, 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 nandun ang Panginoon, pero she's blaming God na ikaw yun. So Naomi may have been returning to the Lord's land in, uh, I mean, physically, but she was not exactly returning to the Lord with a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Naomi's response to the whole town, yun yung sabi niya na mara ang itawag mo sa akin, that's bitter. Yun yung kiniklaim niya na ganun siya. So Naomi wants the town to call her Mara and she wants uh, God to be held responsible for her suffering. Let's look at some of the lessons that we can learn from this section. Ito na yung uh, ano natin, in conclusion natin. Unang una, Ruth was committing her life to Naomi. But in so doing, she is also committing her life to Naomi's God whom she calls as a witness by his personal name, the Lord or Yahweh. Oh, grabe yung radical commitment ni Naomi dito. Makita rin natin how yung commitment natin sa Panginoon, hindi nalalayo yung commitment natin with God's people. No? When we say when we are committed to God, I mean, we can also say we should be committed to the people of God. Now, how can we relate that to our lives now? Sino ang people of God ng panahon ngayon? That is the church. When we, when, when we, alam mo, there is no, hindi, uh, walang, walang song Christian eh, walang mag-isang Christiano eh. Na okay, you have your relationship with God. Unless ikaw ay nasa isang isla, mag-isa ka lang daw, walang ibang tao. Pero hindi ganun yung design ng Panginoon. Ang design ng Panginoon is for a Christian to be committed to Him, pero yung commitment na yun is seen sa kanyang commitment din sa mga alagad ng Panginoon sa kanyang church, kanyang simbahan. Hindi yon malalayo. Okay? Kung maalala nyo ang ating pag-aaral sa, sa church, na uh, when we study the local church in last year, probably around June or July, uh, may quote doon na sinabi natin na the Christian life is the church life. No? Again, hindi siya pwedeng uh, i-divide, walang distinction doon. Okay. Sabi ni Ian Jugud, and this is the second uh, lesson from this section, the gospel is the fundamental answer to Naomi's need and to our own. Tremendous asset that she will prove to be. See, Ruth is a tremendous asset. Pero si Ruth is not the final answer to Naomi's needs. Marahil sumami, sumama si Ruth kay Naomi, It, it may give her uh, a blessing or probably mas mapadali ang kanyang buhay, but those are just temporary. That is not the answer to, uh, to what her problem is. And her problem is, is her heart. No, meron siyang bitterness sa kanyang puso. At walang ibang, sa, walang ibang mag, mag, uh, maghihil ng ating bitterness kundi ang gawa ni Kristo, kundi ang gospel. Ruth is but a character in the whole Bible story who points us to a greater blessing, which is the gospel. 
which is Christ living and dying for his people. Ruth is but a small symbol of God's grace. Nakita natin na, uy, may grasya pala ang Panginoon. No, how, how God used Ruth for the life of Naomi, for the life of the people of Israel, may grasya pala ang Panginoon. Pero more than that, mas makikita natin na yung kabuoang storya nito, that's just a small symbol of his grace. Kasi if we're gonna look for God's grace, then we have to look to Christ. We have to look to the person and work of Jesus Christ. That is where we see the grace of God. And that is, only, that is the, the fundamental answer to our needs. No? Well, hindi nawawala yung yung sa atin, minsan meron tayong disbelief na minsan nagda-doubt tayo. Minsan din uh, tayo ay uh, uh, when, we, when we sin, We, we, sometimes we try to to deceive ourselves by hiding our sins pero ang Dios alam yun eh nakikita yun eh and then habang tumatagal yun as we as we deceive ourselves as we hide our sins naggo-grow ang bitterness sa atin habang tumatagal yun hindi tayo nagre-repent magiging bitter at magiging bitter tayo kanino tayo magiging bitter sa Panginoong Diyos gusto mo bang kumawala dyan sa bitterness na yan? Kung nakikinig ka ngayon, meron kang ganong sa heart mo ngayon. Whatever issues you have, no, probably in your family, in your life, whatever that is, no, it's a result of your sin and because you, uh, dahil nagstay ang bitterness sa puso mo, lalong nag add up yung sin, ang tanging kawala lang dyan is yung gospel. Yun lang magbibigay sa'yo ng pag-asa. Yun, lang, yun yung reminder sa'yo na yung kasalanan natin ay talagang ipinako na sa krus kay Kristo. So he won't feel that bitterness anymore. No? That we can we have now we now have access to God. Pag tayo ay nagkasala, Panginoon, pagtawahin niyo ako. Uh, forgive me. Nagkaroon ng lamat ang, ang 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 ating fellowship in a sense, no? In a sense na when you pray, parang you don't feel as if you want to pray because of sin. Right? Yun yung, yun yung ginagawa ng sin sa ating uh, existing fellowship with the Lord. Pero if we are, again, if we're reminded of the gospel, naaalala natin na when God looks at us, He doesn't see our sins anymore. He sees the righteousness of Christ. And that is only because Christ has attained that righteousness because He lived a life in obedience to, to the laws of God and He died on the cross for us. And He resurrected after three days. So nakikita natin doon no, na yun talaga yung hope natin no, sa ating mga kasalanan, sa ating sa pag-deceive natin sa ating mga sarili, even yung growing bitterness natin. Look to Christ. We don't have to be bitter. We just have to to trust God na siya yung nag-provide sa atin ng ng, ng, ng salvation na gawa ni Cristo. The gospel is the fundamental answer both of our lack of trust in God and for our lack on concern for his people. Thirdly, sabi ni Joel Bickey sa kanyang Reformation Heritage Study Bible. Now, yun yung medyo, yung, yung last statement na sinabi ko more on the vertical aspect yun. Pero yung sa horizontal aspect naman, God's people can experience times of great darkness. Their nation may fall away from true religion into idolatry and immoral living. Their family may face devastating consequences of poor decisions. In such times, all can seem like bitterness and emptiness. But it is essential that we cling to each other with faithful, committed love. To have a true companion like Ruth means the world to someone in pain. Be a true friend or be a true sister in Christ. No? So, kung, may, kung nakikita natin na meron nagsa-struggle sa ating mga kasama, hintayin pa ba natin na yung kailangan o kausapin dapat ng pastor yan? Hindi ganoon ang design ng Panginoon sa church. Pag nakikita natin ang kasama natin, no, na probably tayo lang nakakaalam, gawin na natin. Gawin na natin. Hindi yung oh, so, i, i, kailangan kong kausapin ang aking leader o ang aking pastor para siyang kumausap. Hindi ganoon. Ilang beses sa Biblia inuulit ang one another. One another kayo bawat isa yeah, carry each of your burdens no be a true companion kagaya ni Ruth sinasabi dito no but then again uh, y- y- yun yung yun yung yun yung utos sa atin pagdating sa sa, uh, sa sa church na tayo ay magtulungan talaga lastly 
God's providence, again, ito yun, uh, when we look at kung saan yung placement ng, ng Ruth, sa kabuuan ng scripture, we see the providence of God in keeping His promise to raise the Messiah. Kita natin yon. Kita natin yon sa faithfulness ng kanyang mga tao sa Old Testament. Na siya rin ang nagbibigay ng faithfulness na yon sa mga taong yon. Kasi why? Makita natin sa Matthew chapter 1 verse 5 yung genealogy ni Jesus Christ. Uh, nandoon si Ruth. Okay? So kay Ruth pa nang galing ang hinihintay na Mesaya ng Israel. So makita natin yung kabuong Bible story dito, yung pinaka-hope, yung 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 Uh, magbu- mamumuhay at mamamatay which we know, now know as the gospel ay manggagaling din dito sa storya na to, dito sa tao na to na faithful nung time na maraming issues ang Israel. So doon po nagtatapos ang ating um, uh, study ng Book of Ruth. I hope na naging beneficial po sa inyo. Siguro uh, I'll just open for probably two to three questions. Kung wala naman, uh, magbe-break out po tayo. Meron po bang quest- uh, questions? Okay? Oh, wala. Kung may questions, um, pwede. Sige. Uh, tinatry ko po i-manage lang yung breakout members natin. Um, sag- uh, bear with me lang po. Ah. Habang ina-assign ko, pwede kayo mag-type ng questions if you have questions. Meron po tayong guest ngayon, uh, by the way, si Tita Rosie. Hello po, from uh, from Canada. She is the mom of uh, Deacon Josh. So, uh, ginugrupo ko po ngayon si uh, Tita Arlene, Tita Lily, Tita Marites, uh, uh, Tita Taps, Tita Rosie. So, uh, ang gawin nyo na lang po, uh, bibigyan ko po kayo ng breakout uh, questions, ilalagay ko po sa LARC, tapos uh, kayo na lang po siguro mag-share doon kung kahit sino naman po ang who can, pwede kayo mag-take turns and then just answer it. Uh, fellowship na rin po, of course, uh, para sa inyo. So, Um, teka, imumove ko na po kayo ngayon doon. Um. Teka pa. Wait lang po. Uh, nag assign po ako ng mga groups. Okay. So, um, may mga facilitators po tayo, si Jamie, si Joy, 
si si Jen, si Fran. Yan po. Okay, sige, i-open ko na po sa mga rooms. Ha. Thank you. Ha. Pag may questions po kayo, chat nyo lang po ako. Uh, God bless. Ayan. Sa mukha kayo ni Josh. Bye-bye. Master X. Wala sila, Lane. Wala sila.